Hey everyone, it's Will with Sawduck Creative, and dual lighting is a really interesting way to spice up your images. Let's dive right in. When you're looking for an image to use this effect on, you should use one that has a simple dark background and really strong, well-defined lighting. So first thing I'm going to do is use my object selection tool to select my subject. Now hit Command or Control J to duplicate the selection, and then hit this button to put the selection in a group. Hold Command or Control and click on the thumbnail to bring up the selection lines again, and then with the group folder selected, add a layer mask. This is just going to make it so anything we do in the folder won't go out of the bounds of the selection. If you're working with a color image, this is when you'll want to add a black and white adjustment layer also. Now go down here and add a gradient map. This is different from a regular gradient because instead of just going linearly or radially or any other way, it uses the dark and light values of what's underneath it to distribute its colors. By default, it'll just be black and white, but if we click on the gradient bar, it'll pull up this window where we can edit it. Click on the white and change it to your first color. And you'll want to pick colors that play well together, so in my case, I'm going with cyan and magenta, but do whatever you like. Also, if you want to be really precise, make sure to write down the hex code of each color that you can find right here. After that, hit OK and change the blending mode to hard light. So as you can see, it's filled in all of the bright areas with the color we chose. Now get out your brush with B and make sure it's a soft one. Make sure you have the mask selected and the color set to black. Now draw over where you want the other color to appear, erasing the gradient map where you don't want it. For mine, I want his face, hand, and the inside of his hood to be magenta, so I'm hiding all of the cyan that I see. I'm going pretty fast here, but make sure to take your time and be as precise as you can with this step. Also, if you make any mistakes while brushing, you can always hit X to change the brush to white, and then just fill the mistakes right back in and hit X to switch back to black. Once you're done, duplicate the gradient map and then hit command Control i to invert the map. It's going to look like we just undid all the work we did, but if you go into this map settings, you'll see that when we change the colors, it only changes what we drew on. If it doesn't look quite right, don't be afraid to go back and make some edits. Lastly, I want to apply some lighting effects, so I'm going to add a normal gradient now. It's going to look like this at the beginning, and it's probably going to appear in your group at first, but we don't want that, so hit OK to get rid of this window, and then drag the gradient up so it's above the group. Now set the blending mode to linear light and double click on the thumbnail to bring that window back up. Click on this bar to bring up the color settings. Click on the white box on the top right of the bar and drag its opacity all the way up to 100% so you can see it. Now set the right side to color number one and the left side to color number two. Now click on the top side of the bar to make another box at about the halfway point and set its opacity to 60%. Hit OK, and now set the angle to wherever you like. I'm going to hold Shift to make it move in 15 degree segments, and then set it to 30 degrees, and set its opacity to 50%. And that's perfect. And hey, that's a simple way to do a dual lighting effect in Photoshop. Even though working on design projects may be a lot of fun, it's still incredibly time consuming and even challenging. To help you save time while still creating good work, We've got design templates for Photoshop, which allow you to finish projects within minutes instead of hours. So if you want to start saving time now, start by checking out our links in the description below.